Good morning. Hey, what did your parents want you to be when you grew up? Hopefully, you didn't listen to them. Luciano Pavarotti's mother wanted him to become a banker, but Luciano wanted to sing, so he purposely defied his mother and instead became one of the most commercially successful tenors of all time, giving his final performance at the 2006 Winter Olympics in Turin, Italy. Katy Perry was raised in an evangelical Christian family as the daughter of two pastors. Katy's parents and their staunch religion forbade co-ed dances, parties, and many pop culture staples like movies and magazines. Even after the success of selling 81 million singles worldwide, when her mother was asked at an award show for her daughter how proud she was of her, she simply replied, we strongly disagree with how she's been conducting herself and she knows how disappointed we are. Ouch, mom. Although I think she got back at them when she married Russell Brand. <laughs> Edward Manet was the renowned French painter, was one of the pivotal figures in the transition from realism to impression impressionism that influenced the future of all art. But Manet's father, August, hoped that his son would climb the ranks within a career in the Navy. Manet followed his father's direction and attended the French Naval Academy, but he purposely failed the ac academy interest exam twice and then moved to Paris where he studied art. Singer-songwriter Chris Christopherson has crafted hits that have been performed by stars like Johnny Cash, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Elvis, and, and, and more. But all of this was in defiance of Chris's parents and what they wanted. Chris had received an offer to teach literature at West Point. His parents were thrilled. Chris rejected the job in favor of moving to Nashville to become a songwriter. His parents thought Chris was throwing away his future and they disowned him. Florence Nightingale substantially impacted the course of modern nursing and medicine. But if the lady with the lamp had listened to her parents' objections, it would have been not so. Nightingale was born into a wealthy British family living in Florence, Italy in 1820. Her father was a well-to-do landowner and Florence's mother was an ambitious socialite who expected her daughter to conform to the Victorian standards of marriage and childbearing. But Nightingale wanted to become a nurse. Her parents sternly forbade her from that line of work. Nurses back then, by socialites' view, were considered uneducated and even promiscuous. Florence was given a marriage proposal, but she refused and, refused and enrolled in nursing school at the age of 30. Thank goodness that she did. Nightingale's career led to her improve sanitary conditions at hospitals, develop better nursing practices, and created educational programs and schools for other nurses. Edgar Allan Poe's father, John Allen, wanted Edgar to join the mercantile business after graduating from West Point due also to his father's prodding, but Poe wanted to be a writer. When Poe was expelled from West Point in 1831, his father, John, disowned him. Two years later, Poe won a writing prize from a Baltimore newspaper and the rest is, as we say, history. And Miles Davis, the nine-time Grammy winner, is widely considered one of the most influential and innovative musicians of the 20th century and led the forefront of several developments in jazz, uh, including bebop, cool jazz, hard bop, uh, modal jazz, post bop, and jazz fusion. But his father wanted him to become a dentist. His mother finally relented, but insisted that he play the violin instead. She thought that the stringed instrument would be more socially accepted in a segregated society. And if you're unfamiliar with Miles Davis, he's famous for what he did with the trumpet and was one of my dad's heroes. Speaking of my dad, he wanted me to become a lawyer. <laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. So one day, God summoned Adam for an important task that he must complete. God said, Adam, I want you to do something for me. Adam said, good Lord, what now? Or something like that. God said, go down into that valley. Adam interrupted and asked, what's a valley? God explained it to him. Then God said, I want you to cross that river. Adam interrupted again saying, what's a river? God explained. Then God said, go over, to the, over the hill. Adam asked again, what's a hill? So God explained to Adam what a hill was. God tells Adam, on the other side of the hill, you will find a cave, of course. Adam asked and God explained. Then God said, in the cave, you will find a woman. Adam asked again, what's a woman? So God explained that to him too. God continued, I want you to reproduce. Adam said, well, gosh, God, how do I do that? God muttered away to himself, rather annoyed than just like everything else. God explained that to Adam as well. So Adam goes down into the valley, across the river, over the hill, into the cave and finds the woman. Then after only about 30 minutes, Adam was back. God, his patience wearing thin, asked angrily, what is it now? Adam then asked, what's a headache? Oh. <laughs> hey. 
Okay, okay. My wife and I were having an argument and it was clear that I was winning. Then my wife took off her shirt and bra right at the crescendo and I lost my train of thought. Yeah, I fell for the booby trap. <laughs> okay, someone asked me to name two structures that hold water. I was like, well, damn. <laughs> Get it? Get it? Okay. All right, here's one for the kiddos. What happened when Tinkerbell couldn't find a bathroom? She peed her pants. <laughs> My wife said that joke would never land. Oh. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you on the flip side.